from the lingual surface. The easiest manner in which this is accomplished is by placing the carbide or placing the diamond in the lingual depth cut, raising it and moving it parallel to itself and holding it against the buccal surface. You may have to practice this movement several times. Once satisfied that a parallel orientation has been obtained, proceed and place the buckle depth cut. Once all six depth cuts have been placed, from the occlusal perspective, your tooth preparation will look like this. This is the time to correct any deficiencies in the alignment of the grooves. Again, you may wish to use your perioprobe to verify that all grooves are parallel to one another. From here on, we're ready to proceed with the next step in the actual reduction of the mesial half of this molar. Note that sufficient time is allowed for the rotary instrument to create space for itself and in one continuous motion the diamond is carried from the central to the mesial buccal depth groove. In the interproximal area more tooth structure needs to be reduced so the movement in itself may be somewhat slower. Note that sufficient space is available for the rotary instrument to pass through, yet only a minimal chamfer equal to half the width of the rotary instrument will be placed. The rotary instrument is then carried all the way through the proximal surface, and in this manner, clearance is obtained. From an occlusal perspective, this is the type of cut that you will have. Several passes over the proximal chamfer may be required to smooth any small bumps or irregularities that may have been created during this reduction. The actual reduction is then carried all the way to the center of the lingual surface. Note that the tip of the diamond faithfully follows the contour of the crest of the gingival tissues. And the chamfer is placed in one continuous motion. A reverse pass may be necessary to remove any irregularities that have been made during the initial placement of this margin. Note the continuous and distinct chamfer approximately half the width of the tip of the diamond. At this stage, an assessment can be made of the adequacy of the actual reduction. The chamfer should be smooth and continuous and even in width. Note that it is slightly wider in the proximal aspect 
than in the buccal line angle area. Some additional tooth reduction is necessary here. Similarly, the lingual chamfer appears possibly somewhat on the light side. Additional tooth reduction is required. After the adjustment has been made, note the even width of the completed chamfer. Once satisfied with the actual reduction, the distal reduction can be completed. Remember that in your evaluation, it should be verified that the actual walls of lingual and buccal surface converge by six degrees the taper on the diamond in an occlusal direction. If I were to place the diamond in this position, the convergence of the rotary instrument should be identical to the convergence of both buccal and lingual wall. Verify that no undercuts are present at this stage before you start with the distal half of the actual reduction. Mesiodistally, note that there is a slight degree of convergence with what I would call the long axis of the tooth. The distal wall will also taper approximately three degrees mesially to result in the same six degree taper mesiodistally that now has been established by us already buccolingually. Once satisfied that these criteria have been met, you're ready to complete the distal half of the actual reduction. Orient the diamond in the remainder of the central guiding groove and start your reduction. Initially, it may be easier when you break proximal contact to retain a little island right in the area of the contact point and reserve this as the last procedure so you really have the opportunity to fully concentrate on it. In this case, carefully again place the diamond so it does not touch the adjacent tooth but will result and the chamfer half the width of the rotary instrument and work your way through the interproximal contact area. Allow adequate time for the rotary instrument to make space for itself rather than force it through since that likely will result in the diamond skipping onto the adjacent tooth. A couple of passes will result in a smooth interproximal chamfer. At this stage, assess the adequacy of the chamfer and the reduction. Remember that clearance of at least one millimeter relative to the adjacent tooth must be obtained. Otherwise, insufficient space is available for the impression material. Adjust the placement of your chamfer accordingly. Note that throughout this exercise, the margin will remain at least one millimeter above the pink acrylic resin. If you come any closer than that, you will have to re-prepare an other molar tooth. The next step is to switch to the slow speed fine grit 1DTF diamond and blend all prepared surfaces together. Note the approximate speed that is used and the motion is one with considerable pressure. You will experience a significant change in tactile sense between the high speed and the slow speed contra-angle. 
Similarly, the sharp line angles and the cuspal crests are rounded slightly. This will make laboratory procedures later on much, much easier. Again, carefully round off the sharp edges and sharp transitions between the actual wall and the occlusal surfaces. Blend all areas together. And the last step of this, the last step that is completed with the 1DT fine grid diamond is to finish the chamfer with this rotary instrument that has a slightly greater convexity at its tip than did the half DT with which the chamfer was originally placed. This will eliminate any areas of unsupported tooth enamel from the margin. A pumice wash is next applied with a rubber cup. The primary purpose of the pumice wash is to clean off debris rather than that it serves to buff up the surfaces of the tooth preparation. A wash with air and water is used to clean off the excess pumice. The completed preparation is evaluated. At this stage, note that adequate occlusal clearance is present. Not only in the occluded position, but also in the excursive movements. Do not forget to check the protrusive movement at this stage. The chamfer is evaluated. A proper chamfer will offer resistance against vertical displacement of the sharp explorer. Also, mesiodistally and buccolingually, it should be smooth and continuous. Any irregularities are removed at this stage with the slow speed fine grid diamond. From the occlusal perspective, note that chamfer width is even circumferentially. And from the proximal view, note that no undercuts remain. Adequate clearance is present in the proximal marginal ridge areas. And at this stage, the tooth preparation for the complete gold veneer crown has been completed.